Yes, people. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all South India students. How are you? Hope so. You are good. I am also good. So, guys, today we are going to revise one topic that is basic concept and tax rate for the assessment year 24-25 and alternative taxation regime. So, guys, you know about basic concept, basic concept, income tax act, income tax rule, finance act, and case law circular notification. You already studied it on intermediate. Okay. So, directly for the final level, we will start with the tax rate for your examination. So, for your examination. Assessment year 24-25 is applicable. It means previous year 23-24 is applicable. It means whatever income you have earned in the previous year 23-24, it is going to be taxable in the assessment year 24-25. Means you will file the return in the assessment year 24-25. Now for your examination, Finance Act 2023 is applicable. It means whatever amendment made by Finance Act 2023. Finance Act 2023 means last year in the 2023, Nirmala Sita Ramanji presented the finance bill on 1st Feb 2023 that bill is applicable whatever amendment will be made by the finance act 2024 that is not applicable for your examination okay or i can say that whatever nirmala sitaraman ji will speak on the first feb 2024 that is not applicable for your examination now guys there are two type of the tax rate one is your general tax rate and one is your special tax rate now general tax rate means the slab rates are general tax rate and a special tax rate means you know that long term capital gain from share market under section 112a is taxable at the rate 10%. Short term capital gain from share market is taxable at the rate 15%. Now long term capital gain is taxable at the rate 30%. Winning income is taxable at the rate 30%. Cryptocurrency income taxable at the rate 30%. So guys this all are your special tax rate. Now where sir special tax rates are given guys special tax rates are given in the F income tax act 1961 so whenever you like think about the special tax rate now like 112a 111a 112 winning 30 percent that all tax rates are given in the income tax act 1961 but this general tax rates are given in the finance act 2023 so the general tax rates are given in the finance act 2023 means in the finance act they give the general tax rate and special tax rates are given in the income tax act 1961. Let's start with the general tax rate first. So general tax rate for individual HUF AOP BOI artificial juridical person. So guys for individual HUF AOP BOI and artificial juridical person whether this person are resident or non-resident means even this person are non-resident then also the slab rate is applicable. And now what is the slab rate? Slab rate is means up to 250,000 there is no tax or I can say that 250,000 is basic exemption. 250,000 to 5 lakh, 5% 5, 5 lakh to 10 lakh, 20% more than 10 lakh, 30%. So what I am saying that individual HUF AOP BOI artificial juridical person whether it is re resident or non-resident up to 2 lakh 50,000 there is no tax 250 to 5 lakh, 5% 5, 5 lakh to 10 lakh, 20% more than 10 lakh, 30%. Now guys, in case of the senior citizen, senior citizen means resident individual age 60 years or more in the previous year, but less than 80 years. Here try to understand. Here law says that senior citizen means first point that person is an individual and that should be a resident individual and resident individual age 60 years or more in your previous year, then that person will be treated as senior citizen. Guys, it means suppose there is a one person that person is non-resident and having the age of the 72 years, then also that person is not a senior citizen. What I am saying that if any person is a non-resident having age of the 72 years, then also that person is not a senior citizen. Because senior citizen means here point says that senior citizen means resident individual age 60 years or more in your previous year. Now your previous year is you know that previous year 23-24 and previous year 23-24 start from 1st April 2023 and it is going to end by 20, 31st March 2024. So between this particular period if any person is an age of the 60 years or more but less than 80 years that person is known as the senior citizen. Now guys there is a one catch that catch says that suppose for an example if any person is celebrating his 60th birthday on 1st april 2024 means if any individual celebrating his 60th birthday on 1st april 2024 then also we will assume that that person has completed the age of the 60 years on 31st march 2024 and he can claim the higher basic exemption of the 3 lakh 
तो व्हाट आई एम सेइंग दैट इफ एनी पर्सन इज सेलिब्रेटिंग द 60th बर्थडे 60 60th बर्थडे ऑन 1st अप्रैल 2024 देन इट इज अज्यूम दैट ही हैज कंप्लीटेड हिज एज ऑफ द 60 ईयर ऑन द लास्ट डेट ओनली दैट इज 31st मार्च 2024 एंड ही कैन क्लेम द हायर बेसिक एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ 3 लाख नाउ ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इन केस ऑफ सीनियर सिटीजन योर 3 लाख इज बेसिक एग्जामिनेशन means up to 3 lakh there is no tax 3 lakh to 5 lakh 5% 5 lakh to 10 lakh 20% more than 10 lakh 30% now next part is in case of the super senior citizen super senior citizen means resident individual age 80 years or more in the previous year in this particular case 5 lakh is basic exemption means up to 5 lakh there is no tax 5 lakh to 10 lakh 20% more than 10 lakh 30% remember here there is no slab rate of the 5% here it is only 20% and 30% means 5 lakh to 10 lakh 20% more than 10 lakh 30% Now here also remember, okay, if any person is celebrating his 80th birthday on 1st April 2024, then also he has completed the age of the 80 years on 31st March 2024, and he can claim the enhanced basic exemption of the 5 lakh for the previous year 23, 24. You got my point or not? Yes. Now guys, this is the general tax rate for individual HUF, AOP, BOI, artificial juridical person. Now this is the general tax rate. Now question is that okay, is surcharge is applicable or not? Answer is yes. now when surcharge is applicable surcharge is applicable when you are earning more income so when you are rich when you are earning the more income then obviously you have to pay the surcharge also surcharge is the tax on tax you can say now if your total income your total income total income means i can say that the net taxable income net taxable income means all five head of total income that is called gross total income minus deduction remaining is your total income or you can say that net taxable income guys if your net taxable income is up to 50 lakh rupees na then there is no surcharge if your total income is up to 50 lakh then there is no surcharge if your total income is more than 50 lakhs up to 1 crore then there is a surcharge of the 10% means on the taxes you have to add the surcharge of the 10% if your total income is more than 1 crore up to 2 crore then your surcharge is 15% your total income is more than 2 crore up to 5 crore then your surcharge is 25% and if your total income is more than 5 crore then your surcharge is 37% so what i am saying that try to understand here guys surcharge is depends on your total income your total income is up to 50 lakh there is no surcharge if your total income more than 50 lakh up to 1 crore then 10% more than 1 crore up to 2 crore then 15% more than 2 crore up to 5 crore then 25% more than 5 crore then 37% that is your surcharge limit now guys try to understand one thing law maker says that ke suppose if you are having some special income A special income means either long term capital gain 112 or your short term capital gain from share market triple one a or suppose you are having the dividend income or if there is a normal long term capital gain now remember guys you know that long term capital gain 112 a taxable at the rate 10% in excess of the 1 lakh short term capital gain triple one a taxable at the rate 15% dividend income is taxable as per slab rate and ltcg is taxable as per the 20% so guys this income basically this four income you can say that as a special income now law maker nirmala sitaraman ji says that okay, whatever the level of this income highest surcharge on tax on this income is restricted to the 15% means whatever the tax amount on this income on that tax maximum surcharge can be the 15% in case of your income is in the nature of ltcg 112a or stcg triple one or dividend income or ltcg tax on this income maximum surcharge can be the 15% it means guys for an example in the current year i have earned the 15 crore rupees long term capital gain then tax first i will calculate the tax on that surcharge can be maximum 15% not more than that even my like that income is more than 5 crore then also maximum surcharge can be the 15% on tax on this special income now one more point suppose in the current year i earn the dividend income of 20 crore then also on that i will calculate the tax by slab rate and on that tax surcharge can be maximum 15% means maximum surcharge is restricted to 15% in simple word i can say that 25% and 37% surcharge not applicable on this special income so on this special income tax surcharge of 25% and 37% not applicable now guys try to understand here now 
सो गैस ऑलवेज रिमेंबर इफ योर टोटल इनकम इज अप टू फिफ्टी लैख देन ऑब्वियसली देर इज नो सर चार्ज इफ योर टोटल इनकम इज मोर देन फिफ्टी लैख अप टू वन करोड़ देन टेन परसेंट इज अ सर चार्ज ऑन टैक्स टोटल इनकम मोर देन वन करोड़ अप टू टू करोड़ देन फिफ्टीन परसेंट इज अ सर चार्ज ऑन द टैक्स नाउ ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड सपोज इफ योर टोटल इनकम इज मोर देन टू करोड़ देन गाइज इफ योर टोटल इनकम इज मोर देन टू करोड़ एंड सपोज इट इंक्लूड द डिविडेंड कैपिटल गेन it is called special income so suppose if your total income is more than 2 crore and it include the ltcg 112a ltcg or stcg 311a or dividend income then what you have to do just take the 15% surcharge on tax on this special income now you have to check the what is the amount of the remaining income if your remaining income is Up to two crore. Means your remaining income. That remaining income means other than special income. If your remaining income is up to two crore, then whatever the tax on that remaining income on that tax, just add the surcharge at the rate fifteen percent. Means on the remaining income tax also surcharge will be the fifteen percent. But suppose remaining income itself is more than two crore, up to five crore, then guys, surcharge on the tax on remaining income will be the twenty five percent. If your remaining income is more than five crore, then guys tax on say tax or to first calculate the tax on that remaining income and surcharge on that tax will be the thirty seven percent. You got my point or not? Yes. So try to understand. All people pay attention. First, you have to check the total income. If your total income is up to fifty lakh, there is no surcharge. If your total income is more than fifty lakh, up to one crore, just add the ten percent surcharge. If your total income is more than one crore, up to two crore, just add the fifteen percent surcharge. If your total income Is more than two crore. Then now check if your total income is having the LTCG, STCG triple one A or LTCG one one two A or like dividend income. This is called special income. So guys, first segregate the special income on special income. Calculate the tax and on that tax just add the fifteen percent surcharge. Now what is the amount of the remaining income? If remaining income is up to two crore, then tax on such remaining income and on that tax surcharge is fifteen percent. But suppose that remaining income itself is more than two crore, then tax on that remaining income and surcharge is twenty five percent. If that remaining income is more than five crore, then tax on that remaining income and surcharge is thirty seven percent on that remaining tax. You got my point or not? Yes. Now you will do some certain example, then you will able to understand. Now next part is in case of the company. Sir, what is the tax rate of company? So, in case of the company, there are two type of the company. One is the domestic company, and one is the foreign company. Now, in case of the domestic company, your tax rate is thirty percent. But always remember, in case of the domestic company, if your turnover for previous year twenty one twenty two is up to four hundred crore. In case of domestic company, if your turnover for previous year twenty one twenty two is up to four hundred crore, then your tax rate is twenty five percent. Otherwise, domestic company tax rate is thirty percent. Now, guys, you are calculating tax for the previous year twenty three twenty four, but you are checking the turnover for previous year twenty one twenty two. So, what I am saying that in case of the domestic company, normally your tax rate is thirty percent. But if that domestic company previous year twenty one twenty two turnover is up to four hundred crore, then twenty five percent. Now, in case of the foreign company, your tax rate is forty percent. In case of the foreign company, your tax rate is forty percent. Now, is surcharge is applicable? Answer is yes. Surcharge is applicable. Now, what is the rate of surcharge? So, surcharge depends on your total income. In case of the domestic company, if your total income is more than one crore up to ten crore, then surcharge is seven percent. If your total income is more than ten crore, then surcharge is twelve percent. And in case of foreign company, your surcharge is two percent and five percent instead of the seven percent and twelve percent. So, what I am saying that surcharge, surcharge depend on your total income. Your total income of the company is more than one crore up to ten crore. Then, in case of domestic company, it's seven percent. In case of foreign company, it's two percent. If your total income is more than ten crore, then in case of domestic company, it's twelve percent. In case of foreign company, it's five percent. You got my point or not? Yes. Now, guys, in case of the partnership firm LLP and local authority, your tax rate is flat thirty percent. Your tax rate is flat thirty percent. Surcharge is applicable. Answer is yes. Surcharge is applicable if your total income is more than one crore. Then surcharge is applicable at the rate twelve percent. So at the rate twelve percent, surcharge is applicable if your total income is more than one crore. Now, guys, in case of the cooperative society, there is a slab rate. In case of cooperative society, if your total income is up to ten thousand, then your tax rate is ten percent. Ten thousand to twenty thousand means more than ten thousand up to twenty thousand, then twenty percent tax rate. Now more than twenty thousand, then tax rate is a thirty percent. Now in case of the cooperative society, surcharge is applicable like a domestic company. 
Like domestic company, it means if your total income more than one crore up to ten crore, then seven percent more than ten crore, then twelve percent. Now, guys, always remember first you will calculate the tax after that add surcharge if it is applicable. And guys, just you have to add the health and education says at the rate four percent. So first tax plus surcharge and plus health and education says is four percent, and it is applicable always. Now, always remember in case of the your income total income as well as the net tax payable is always rounded off in the nearest rupees of the 10 now always rounded off in the nearest rupees of the 10 suppose for an example there is a 25831 then you have to consider the 830 suppose if it is a 835 then you have to consider 840 if it is a 838 then also you have to consider the 840 it means if fraction is a 1 2 3 4 then lower 10 5 6 7 8 9 then upper 10 you got my point or not yes now guys here i have given this various example related to the taxes ra tax rates so there are three example i have given and after that three like uh, test yourself also so just do it okay now we are going to start with one concept is called marginal relief now what is the marginal relief marginal relief is applicable whenever your income is little bit more then 50 lakh or 1 crore or 2 crore or 5 crore in case of individual huf aop bui artificial juridical person or in case of company, if your total income is little bit more than 1 crore or 10 crore. In case of partnership firm, your income is little bit more than 1 crore. And guys, what happened many times, you know that. Your increase in taxes is more than increase in income due to the surcharge. So that place, they will provide you some marginal relief. I can take one example, try to understand. For an example, there is a one company that Sri Limited is one Indian company. Total income of company is 1 crore, 1 lakh. And guys, turnover for previous year 21, 22 is 450 crore. That is more than 400 crore. Now, first calculate the tax. So on 1 crore, 1 lakh, if you calculate the tax at the rate 30%, it comes to the 30 lakh, 30,000. So 30 lakh, 30,000 is tax. Now question is that is surcharge is applicable or not? Answer is yes, surcharge is applicable. Why surcharge is applicable? Because your total income is more than 1 crore. So when your total income is more than 1 crore, surcharge is applicable at the rate 7%. So just add the surcharge 7%. So your surcharge is 2,12,100. Your total comes to the 32,42,100. Now here total comes to the 32,42,100. Here SSC says that, yes, sir, we made the mistake. Why we made the mistake? Because your income is 1 crore, 1 lakh. And on that tax is 32,42,100. Suppose company says that, suppose we have earned the income of only 1 crore. Then can I say that tax on that 1 crore is only 30 lakh? There is no surcharge. Because surcharge is applicable only if your total income is more than 1 crore. So suppose here your income was only 1 crore, then here tax is only 30 lakh. Now company says that, sir, we made the mistake. We have earned mistakenly 1 lakh rupees extra. Just take that 1 lakh rupees. We don't want that 1 lakh rupees. Nirmala Sita Ramanji, Narendra Modi ji, take that, took that 1 lakh rupees. We don't need that 1 lakh rupees. Then also it comes to the 31 lakh. But here you are charging 32 lakh 42,100. That is not fair. Na? That is not fair because guys, here income is 1 crore 1 lakh. Your tax comes to 32 lakh 42,100. If your income was only 1 crore, then your tax was only 30 lakh. You have made the mistake. You have earned the 1 lakh rupees extra. So if you have earned the 1 lakh rupees extra, just give that 1 lakh to government. Then also it comes to the 31 lakh. It, it is lower than 32 lakh 42,100. So here guys, lawmaker says that don't worry, you will get the marginal relief. Because guys, in this particular example, if you see your income over 1 crore is increased by 1 lakh. If your income over 1 crore is increased by 1 lakh and due to that your tax is increased by 2,42,100. Due to that your tax is increased by 2,42,100. So here lawmaker says that whatever difference of this that is 1,42,100 this will be your marginal relief. Because if you see here income over 1 crore is increased by only 1 lakh and due to that 1 lakh income, your tax is increased by 2,42,100. So here 1,42,100 will be your marginal relief. Now for the examination purpose, I have given you very good format. Just understand this format, what you have to do. 
Try to understand whenever your income is little bit, in case of company, little bit more than 1 crore or little bit more than 10 crore. Because at the, at the when your income is more than 10 crore, na, then your surcharge rate is changed from 7% to 12%. What you have to do here, try to understand. First, calculate the tax on 1 crore, 1 lakh. Just add the surcharge and after that, just write that this amount is restricted to tax on 1 crore. Means if your income was only 1 crore, then what could be the tax? Plus NTI minus 1 crore. NTI minus 1 crore means whatever excess income over 1 crore, just give it to the Nirmala Sita Ramanji. So here tax on 1 crore plus NTI minus 1 crore, it comes to the 31 lakh. And I am saying that guys, okay, this 31 lakh, this 32 lakh 42,100 is restricted to 31 lakh. Just continue the whichever is lower. Automatically, you will get the marginal relief of 1 lakh 42,100. Here automatically you will get the marginal relief of 1,42,100. After that just add the health and education says you will get your final answer. You got my point or not? Yes. One more point like in case of the second example in case of the company there is a tree limited income is 10 crore to like 30,000. So guys income is little bit more than 10 crore. What you have to do first just take the tax just calculate the taxes on your taxes on your income. So you can you have calculated the taxes on 10 crore to like 30,000 add surcharge 12 percent because your income is more than your income is more than 10 crore. After that, just write this amount is restricted to the tax on 10 crore. Means if your income was only 10 crore, then what could be the taxes? So here, guys, taxes on tax crore 10 crore plus NTI minus 10 crore, whatever excess amount over 10 crore, just give to the Nirmala Sita Ramanji. So here taxes on 10, 10 crore, but remember, whenever you calculate the taxes on 10 crore, na, then if your income was only 10 crore, then guys, can I say that surcharge is applicable? Answer is yes, at least 7% surcharge is applicable. Na. So just calculate the tax on 10 crore, 10 crore, tax rate is 25%, so 2.5 crore is a tax plus 7%. So here tax on 10 crore comes to the 2 crore 67 lakh 50,000 plus excess income over 10 crore is a 2 lakh 30,000. Just give it to Nirmala Sita Ramanji, whichever is lower. So automatically you will get your marginal relief. Now question is that sir is marginal relief is applicable only in case of the company only answer is no guys marginal relief is applicable wherever surcharge is applicable. So in case of the individual HUF, AOP, BUI, artificial juridical person, partnership firm and all marginal relief is applicable. So wherever surcharge is applicable marginal relief is applicable means your income is little bit more than that limit then guys marginal relief is applicable you got my point or not yes after that example number third four five you can do it at your home now next part is a section 87a 87a is related to the rebate for certain individual you heard that if your income is up to five lakh then there is no need to pay the taxes so that is the one rebate 87a now this 87a rebate says that this rebate is applicable only to resident individual and this rebate says that if your income is up to 5 lakh, means your income, income is total income, total income is net taxable income is after claiming deduction. Your total income is up to 5 lakh rupees and assess is a resident individual, then guys your rebate will be the 100% of tax payable or 12,500 whichever is lower. So whatever your tax amount or 12,500 whichever is lower is your rebate. I can take an example, suppose assess income is 4 lakh 40,000. So on 4 lakh 40,000 just calculate the tax by slab rate up to 2 lakh 50,000 and there is no tax 250 to 4 lakh 40 thousand five percent so your tax comes to the 9500 and your rebate is tax amount or 12500 lower comes to the 9500 so here guys 9500 is rebate there is no need to pay the taxes but suppose if your total income is 5 lakh 7000 then rebate is not available because this rebate is available only if your total income is up to 5 lakh here your total income is more than 5 lakhs so rebate is not available so tax amounts is 13,900 add health and education says so net tax you require to pay is 14,465 here guys your income is more than 5 lakh by only 7,000 but due to that taxes is 14,456 question is that is there is any marginal relief here answer is no under section 87a marginal relief is not there but guys, I will teach you, if you opt 115 BAC, there is a one new section. If you opt 115 BAC, then instead of this 5 lakh, it is increased to 7, 7 lakh. Instead of 12,500, it increased to 25,000 and their marginal relief concept is also introduced. That we will discuss along with the section 115 BAC. Now, one more point. Okay, sir, under section 87A, this rebate of 12,500 or 100% of tax payable is applicable. But sir, it is applicable on tax on 
every type of the income answer is yes any type of the income even you are having the short term capital gain triple one a or long term capital gain normal wala normal long term capital gain or any type of the income this rebate is available but guys there is a only one exception if you are having the ltcg 112a if you are having the long term capital gain 112a long term capital gain 112a then this rebate is not available so against long term capital gain 112a share market uh, long term capital gain this rebate is not available why because guys long term capital gain 112a you know that up to 1 lakh anyway there is no tax up to 1 lakh there is no tax only in excess of 1 lakh there is a 10% tax that's why they have say, said that ke, if you are having the long term capital gain 112a then this particular rebate under section 87a is not applicable you got my point or not yes now we are going to start with the alternative taxation regime now guys alternative taxation regime and alternative taxation regime first section is 115b double a 115b double a you can say that 115 bar. So 115 bar, this particular section says that in case of the domestic company. Now guys, domestic company include any type of company, huh? like manufacturing, non-manufacturing, service provider company, new company, old company, any company. Now any domestic company has an option that they can pay the taxes at the rate 22%. Now wow, because normal tax rate is 25%, 30%. Here tax rate is only 22%. But question is that is this 22% is a final tax rate? or it is a base tax rate right answer is guys this 22 percent tax rate will be increased by the 10 percent of the surcharge now sir surcharge to depends on the total income now but guys here surcharge is always always means irrespective of your total income even your total income of 100 rupees then also surcharge is applicable 10 percent answer is yes and health and education says is applicable at the rate 4 percent so i can say that your effective tax rate will be the 25.168 percent so in case of the domestic company if domestic company opting 115 b double a then your tax rate is 22 percent plus 10 percent plus 4 percent effective tax rate is 25.168 percent but question is that sir what about the other income like suppose that domestic company is having income from house property or other sources and all that also taxable at the rate 22 percent only means other income is also taxable at the rate 22 percent only effective tax rate is 25.168 percent but what about the special rates of income because normally long term capital gain 112 a taxable at the rate 10 percent short term capital gain triple one a taxable at the rate 15 percent winning income taxable at 30 percent long term capital gain taxable at the rate 20 percent what about the special rates of income tax guys special rates of income is taxable as per special rates only but always remember here you have to add the 10 percent surcharge and 4 percent health and education says so suppose if there is a short term capital gain triple one a then your tax rate will be the 15 percent plus 10 percent plus 4 percent will be your final tax rate you got my point or not yes but guys one more benefit if company is opting 115 b double a na, then company is not required to pay the mat mat is not applicable minimum alternate tax is not applicable but sir what about the broad forward mat credit because you know that mat credit can be carried forward for the 15 assessment year what about the mat credit guys mat credit will be lapse because when mat is not applicable then what about the mat credit if mat is not applicable then what about the mat credit mat, mat credit will be going to lapse now when company when government is giving so much benefit tax rate is only 22 percent instead of 25 or 30 percent then government has asked you to surrender something so there are some benefit which you have to forego which you have to leave that benefit now what you have to leave first is company cannot claim the 10 double a deduction 10 double a is a scz you know that that 15 year deduction is available for the scz unit first five year 100 percent of export profit second five year 50 percent of export profit third five year 50 percent of export profit or scz reinvestment reserve whichever is lower so guys that 10 double a deduction is not available one is the additional depreciation is not available means that company cannot claim the additional depreciation appreciation third is a 33 ab and 33 aba deduction is not available in pgbp if you remember 33 ab the t coffee rubber development board and you have to deposit some amount in the nabar or in 33 aba site restoration account so that deduction is not available after that under scientific research that 35 1 2 35 1 2 a 35 1 3 35 2 AA and 35 2 AB deduction is not available these sections are basically related to the donation to the others in the scientific research 
गाइस इफ यू रिमेंबर आई हैव मेंशन दैट कि लाइक डोनेशन टू रजनी आईसीयू रजनी आईसीयू मींस रिसर्च एसोसिएशन इंस्टीट्यूट कॉलेज यूनिवर्सिटी इफ यू मेड डोनेशन फॉर साइंटिफिक रिसर्च और सोशल स्टैटिस्टिकल रिसर्च और डोनेशन मेड टू द आईआईटी नेशनल लेबोरेटरी और डोनेशन मेड टू द एनी इंडियन कंपनी एंगेज्ड इन द साइंटिफिक रिसर्च देन डिडक्शन वाज अवेलेबल 100% गाइस दिस डिडक्शन इज नॉट अवेलेबल इफ एसएससी ऑप्टिंग 115 बा बट गाइस रिमेंबर here they mention about this section only but guys suppose if there is a in house research then deduction under section 3511 and 3514 is available ah 3511 and 3514 is related to the scientific research for in house research means revenue expenditure and capital expenditure for your own scientific research related to your business then deduction is still available even you are claiming the 115 ba benefit But guys, donation related benefits is not available. Next is 35 AD deduction is not available. 35 AD that 14 specified business coal chain facility warehousing for like uh, agriculture produce, petroleum, natural gas pipeline, hotel, hospital, slurry pipeline, and all that is 35 AD specified business that deduction is not available. After that, 35 triple C and 35 CCD is not available. 35 triple C is related to the agriculture extension project and CCD is related to the skill development project. These deductions are not available. After that, any deduction under Chapter 6A is not available. Any deduction under Chapter 6A means ATG is not available. ATGGA is not available. ATGGB is not available. ATGGC is not available. ATQQB, RRB, and all all any deduction under Chapter 6A is not available except three. Three is available. One is the AT double J double A is available. AT double J double A is like in the current year. If you recruited the new employee, then whatever the emoluments paid through to the new employee, thirty percent deduction is available. So AT double J double A is available. AT LA is available. AT LA means suppose if your company is located in the International Financial Service Center at Gandhi Nagar, Gujarat, near to Ahmedabad, first IFSC, then you know that ten year there is no need to pay the taxes, so that deduction is still available. And AT M is available. AT M is related to the inter corporate dividend. Suppose any domestic company receive dividend from another domestic company or foreign company or business trust, and they give the distribute the dividend in current year. Up to the due date of return filing means one month before the due date of return filing. Then, guys, whatever dividend received and dividend distributed, whichever is lower is deduction under section ATM that is inter corporate dividend. So, this three deduction is available. Other than this three deduction, any other deduction under chapter six is not available. Now, one more point, lawmaker says that okay, suppose in your brought forward losses. Or in your unabsorbed depreciation, if there is any loss or a depreciation due to this section, then that loss you cannot set off. That depreciation you cannot set off. It is going to be lapsed. So in simple word, if your brought forward losses, suppose in your brought forward losses there is a loss due to section thirty five AD business, or in your unabsorbed depreciation there is a like depreciation related to the additional depreciation, then now you cannot set off that. It is going to be lapsed. Now one more point, guys. This section is not mandatory. If company wants to opt this section, then company has to file one form that is form number ten IC up to the due date of return filing. Up to the due date of return filing, company has to file one form that is ten IC up to the due date of return filing. Then company will opt this section. But once this section is opted, na then this section is applicable for the like remaining years also. So for the next year also, company has to opt this section. So once this option is exercised, it is applicable for subsequent years also. But guys, here one point says that okay, suppose in the subsequent year, if there is any violation, means company made any violation and suppose company not followed this condition, and they claim any deduction, then company will be come out from one one five B double A from that year, and again they cannot opt the one one five B double A. Again they cannot opt the one one five B double A. You got my point or not? Yes. This is the section one one five B double A. Now next section is one one five B A B one one five B A B one one five B A B one one five B A B. Now guys, this section is applicable if new domestic manufacturing company. Here company should be the new guys. That one one five B double A was for the old all type of the domestic company, old, new, manufacturing, non manufacturing. But guys, this section one one five B A B is applicable only for the manufacturing and new domestic company. Now new domestic company means that company should be set up and registered on or after first October two thousand nineteen, and that manufacturing business should be commenced till thirty first March two thousand twenty four. So company should be set up and registered on or after first October two thousand nineteen, and company should have started the manufacturing business till thirty first March two thousand twenty four. And guys, if company opting this section now, then tax rate is only fifteen percent. Only fifteen percent is tax rate. Now question is that is fifteen percent is final tax rate? Answer is no. 
In this 15% tax rate, you have to add the 10% surcharge and 4% health and education says. So effective tax rate will be your 17.16%. Your 17.16% will be the effective tax rate. I will tell uh, always 15%, but always you have to add the like 10% uh, surcharge and 4% health and education says. Now, sir, you are saying that tax rate is only 15%. Answer is yes. But guys, this 15% tax rate is applicable only on income from the, your manufacturing business. Huh? Suppose that company is having any other income, then what will be the tax rate like house property income, other sources income then? Guys, for the house property income or other sources income and all, your tax rate will be the 22% instead of 15%. For the house property income, other sources income, your tax rate is a 22% instead of the 15% plus 10% surcharge, 4% health and education says. But there is a one antica point. Try to understand. In house property income or other sources income, your gross income is going to be taxable. Means any deduction or allowances is not allowed. You know that under house property, there is a 30% standard deduction that is not allowed. Or interest on loan deduction under section 24B, that is not allowed. So your gross income is going to be taxable at the rate 22%. But sir, what about the special rates of income? So guys, special rates of income will be taxable as per special rates only. Just add the 10% surcharge and 4% health and education says. Now, what about the normal short term capital gain? Normal short term capital gain, here two type of the short term capital gain. Normally, you know that there are two type of short term capital gain. One is the triple one A. Triple one A is a 15%. That is your, you can say that special rates of income. So, special rates of income is taxable as per special rates. But guys, if there is a other short term capital gain, then lawmaker says that is that short term capital gain is due to the depreciable asset. If that short term capital gain is due to the depreciable asset, then your tax rate is only 15%. 15% plus 10% plus 4%. Why it is? Because guys, on the depreci depreciable asset, you know that you have claimed the depreciation earlier. And when you claim the depreciation, it means you have saved the PGBP income. Means you have saved the PGBP income or you can say PGBP taxes you have saved. It means you have saved the 15% taxes here. So now if you are transferring that asset, then you have to pay the tax only at the rate 15%. But suppose if there is a short term capital gain other than depreciable asset, then guys tax rate is 22%. So what I am saying that if your manufacturing business income taxable at the rate 15%, other sources house property income taxable at 22%, special rates income taxable as per special rate only. Now short term capital gain on depreciable asset taxable at 15% and and your short term capital gain on non depreciable asset is taxable at the rate 22% and guys always you have to add the 4% health and education says and 10% surcharge no? now guys suppose in case of the company who is opting 115 bab suppose they are declaring the super profit or i can say that extra profit how it is possible i can take an example suppose i am having one company in the mumbai and one company I have set up in the Madurai. Now Madurai, I have set up one company. Now Madurai company is suppose opting 115 BAB. I am a common shareholder or same director. So what I did, like Madurai company is paying taxes at the rate 15% and suppose my Mumbai company is paying taxes at the rate 30%. What I will do? I will just manufacture some goods in the Madurai company and I will transfer to Mumbai company. But what happened? I will change the billing amount. And suppose goods worth of 10 crore, I will sell at 20 crore. So what will happen in Madurai company profit will be higher. And in Madurai company profit will be higher, but their tax rate is only 15%. Na? But in Mumbai company profit will be lower and I am saving the 30% tax. So effectively I am making the sale, like I am saving the 15% taxes. So guys, people were made doing that type of practice. So lawmaker says that here assessing officer has the power and assessing officer will calculate the profit of the Madurai company. And if Madurai company is earning the normal profit, then it's okay. But Madurai company is earning the extraordinary profit or super profit, then that super profit or extra profit, government will charge the taxes at the rate 30%. So on that extra profit here, government will charge the taxes at the rate 30% plus 10% surcharge plus 4% health and education says. Now one more point. Guys, if MAT is not applicable, if company opting 115 BAB, then MAT is not applicable. Now what about the MAT credit? Guys, there is no question of MAT credit because in the first year only company has to opt this section. Because this is for only for new domestic manufacturing company. So in the first year only company has to opt this section. So there is no question of the MAT credit because MAT itself is not applicable. Now guys, there are certain conditions. 
and if this conditions are satisfied then only company can opt this section and condition first condition is company should be set up on or after 1st October 2019 and they should have started the manufacturing business till 31st March 2024. Second condition is company should be new means business should be new it should not be split up or reconstruction of your existing business means you should start the new business. Third condition ke whatever plant and machinery required for that business should be new. But there are two exceptional cases. One is the your tot out of total plant and machinery, 20% plant and machinery can be second end. And one more point, if any imported plant and machinery, even that is the second end, it will be treated as new only for the purpose of this section. So what third condition says that all plant and machinery should be new. But there are two exceptional cases. One is the out of the total plant and machinery, 20% can be second end. And second is the imported plant and machinery will be treated as new only for the purpose of this section. Now, Point number four says that okay, this company cannot use any hotel or convention center means earlier it was used as hotel or convention center and now that building is using for this business that is not possible. So what I am saying that okay, this company cannot use any building which was previously used at hotel or convention center. Now fifth condition is that company should be engaged only in the manufacturing business. Guys here that company should be engaged only in the manufacturing business or and research related to that business and distribution of product manufactured by that, that company. So what I am saying that company should engage in only three activity. One is the manufacturing business. Second is research related to that business. And third is a distribution of the product produced by that company. Now one more point guys. Lawmaker says that this business will not be treated as manufacturing business. One is the development of computer software is not a manufacturing business. Mining is not a manufacturing business. Conversion of marble block or similar item into the slab is not a manufacturing business. Bottling of gas into cylinder is not a manufacturing business production of the movie or printing of the books is not a manufacturing is the business or any other notified business is not a manufacturing business so what I'm saying that development of computer software is not a manufacturing business mining is not a manufacturing business conversion of marble block into slabs or tiles is not a manufacturing business printing of books or production of movies is not a manufacturing business but wait a minute electricity generation will be treated as manufacturing business electricity generation will be treated as manufacturing business point number six says that company cannot claim the 10 AA deduction additional depreciation 33 ab aba after that scientific research related donation deduction is not available 35 ad not available 35 ccc not available 35 ccd is not available under chapter 6a any deduction is not available except two deduction is available one is the 80 double j double a is available and one is the 80 m is available so, AT double J double A is available and AT M is available. Other than that, any deduction under chapter 6A not available. One more point guys, if any losses or unabsorbed depreciation due to this section, then obviously it cannot be set up and carry forward. But obviously in the practical life, this will not be any situation. Now, next part. Lawmaker says that if company want to opt this section, then company has to file one form that is form number 10 ID up to the due date of written filing of the first written. Miss suppose company is incorporated in that year company will file the first written in the first written only company has to opt this section. In the first written only company has to opt this section then only this benefit of 15% is available otherwise 15% benefit is not available and once company opted this section then this section is applicable for subsequent years also means subsequent years also this section is applicable this benefit is available. Now one more point lawmaker says that suppose in the subsequent year if any condition is not satisfied then if any condition is not satisfied in the subsequent year, then company will be come out from this section and normal provision will be applicable. But here lawmaker says that suppose if there is a violation of condition number 3, 4 or 5. 3, 4 or 5 means 3 means that plant and machinery is like suppose there is a second and plant and machinery or fourth is condition is like building they have used earlier it was used as hotel or convention center or their business is not a manufacturing business then they can opt out from 115 BAB and they can opt the 115 BAA of the 22% means they can come out from the 15% and they can opt the 22% tax rate you got my point or not yes this is all about the section 115 BAB a b now guys we'll discuss 115 bac after some time but before that there is a one section b a d now guys this 115 b a d section is basically exactly replica of 115 b a 115 b a you know that in case of domestic company that 22 percent tax rate here it is for the resident cooperative society tax rate is 22 percent 
हियर इट इज फॉर रेजिडेंट कोऑपरेटिव सोसाइटी बिकॉज कोऑपरेटिव सोसाइटीज नॉर्मली दे आर हैविंग दैट स्लैब रेट ऑफ अप टू टेन थाउजेंड टेन परसेंट टेन थाउजेंड टू ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी परसेंट मोर देन ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड थर्टी परसेंट सो फॉर दैट कंपनी गाइज For the company, sorry, co for cooperative society, that is the tax rate. But for the resident cooperative society, they are having the alternative taxation regime and just pay the taxes at the rate twenty two percent. All other provision are similar to the one one five B double A. So here, if you read that, it is similar to the one one five B double A. Now, guys, in the same line, there is a one more new section introduced by the Finance Act two thousand twenty three only from assessment year twenty four twenty five. There is a one section one one five B A E. and this 115 bae is basically similar to the 115 bab 115 bab was applicable to new domestic manufacturing company this section is applicable for the new manufacturing resident cooperative society and that cooperative society resident cooperative society set up and registered on or after 1st april 2023 and they started the manufacturing business till 31st march 2024 their tax rate is 15% all conditions are similar Everything is similar, but there is a you know that in uh, that one one five B A B there was a one condition that they cannot use any building which was earlier used as hotel or convention center. That condition is not applicable here. That condition is not applicable here. All other condition are similar only. If you read the one one five B A E, you will able to understand. Now, guys, one more point. Whenever you follow the one one five B A A or B A B or B A D or B A E or B A C. Then, guys, maximum depreciation can be the forty percent. Means maximum depreciation rate is forty percent, and MAT and AMT is not applicable. Now, guys, we are going to start with one the very interesting section one one five BAC, and there are amendment in this section. Now, what this section says that one one five BAC is a amended section, and there is like huge amendment from this year. This section is amended from assessment year twenty four twenty five. Now, this section is applicable for the individual HUF, AOP, BUI, artificial juridical person. Guys, till last year, this section was applicable only for individual HUF. Now, it is applicable for individual HUF, AOP, BUI, artificial juridical person, other than cooperative society. Because for cooperative society, you know that 115 BAD is there, 115 BAE is there. So, for cooperative society, this section is not applicable. Otherwise, for individual HUF, AOP, BUI, artificial juridical person, this section is applicable. Whether resident or non-resident, this section says. Is that now this will be your slab rate up to 3 lakh there is no tax 3 lakh to 6 lakh 5% 6 lakh to 9 lakh 10% 9 lakh to 12 lakh 15% 12 lakh to 15 lakh 20% more than 15 lakh 30% now how you can remember this slab rate so first remember 3 3 lakh and just add the 3 3 3 lakh so 3 lakh 6 lakh 9 lakh 12 lakh 15 lakh more than 15 lakh now guys here in the tax rate just add the 55% but last jump will be of the 10% miss 20% to direct 30% there is no 25% slab rate okay so here nil after that 5 10 15 20 and directly 30 miss more than 15 lakh is a 30 lakh 30% so this is your slab rate now question is that what is the surcharge guys here surcharge will depend on the total income You know that your total income of individual HUF, AOP, BUI, artificial juridical person is up to fifty lakh. There is no surcharge. More than fifty lakh, up to one crore, ten percent surcharge. More than one crore, up to two crore, fifteen percent surcharge. More than two crore, up to five crore, twenty five percent surcharge. More than five crore. Hey guys, you know that in the normal provision there was thirty seven percent surcharge. But guys, if you follow the one one five BAC na, then thirty seven percent surcharge is not applicable. 37% surcharge is not applicable here 37% surcharge is not applicable it means here maximum surcharge is 25% here maximum surcharge is 25% 37% surcharge is not applicable guys one more point amt is not applicable alternate minimum tax not applicable what about the amt credit so amt credit will be lapsed since amt is not applicable so amt credit is going to be lapsed now guys when any assessee is following this section then they have to surrender some benefit now what benefit they have to surrender so first we will discuss head by head first is a salary head so guys under salary head under section 16 you remember there are three type of the deduction one is the entertainment allowance deduction is available to the government employee one is the professional tax deduction is available to any person and one is the 50000 standard deduction is available now guys there is amendment in this section this section says that the yeah, entertainment allowance deduction is not available deduction for entertainment allowance is not available if assessee opting this section 
professional tax deduction is not available if SSC opting this section. But guys, that 50,000 rupees standard deduction is still available. Even you opting 115 BAC or not opting 115 BAC. But you know that till last year, what was there? Till last year, that 115 BAC opting, then that 50,000 standard deduction was not there. But now guys, even you are opting 115 BAC, that 50,000 standard deduction is still there. You can claim the 50,000 standard deduction. So what I'm saying that entertainment allowance deduction not available, professional tax deduction not available. Available. After that, in case of the leave travel concession, there is an exemption under section 10.5 that 10.5 leave travel concession exemption is not available. After that, HRA exemption is not available. After that, guys, any allowances exemption is not available. Allowances exemption means allowances. If you remember that children hostel allowance, children education allowance and all exemption was there. So that exemptions are not available. So any allowances exemption is not available, but there is a one exception is of DTDC. Now, what is the DTDC? First D means for the Divyang employee. Divyang means handicap employee. If you remember for the handicap employee, there is a commutation allowance or you can say that transport allowance. So there is a commutation allowance or transport allowance and in commutation allowance transport allowance there is a 3200 is a exemption. There is a 3200 is exemption so that 3200 per month is exemption that is still there even SSC is opting 115 BAC. One is the traveling on tour allowance, daily allowance and convince allowance. Guys, on the traveling on tour allowance, daily allowance and convince allowance, there is an exemption equal to amount spent, means actual amount spent. So whatever amount spent by the employee, that is your exempt amount. So that is still available. Even you are opting 115 BSE. Now next part is under house property. Guys, under house property, in case of the self-occupied property, you remember 24B, that interest on loan deduction is available of 30,000 rupees or 2 lakh. So that 30,000 rupees or 2 lakh, that interest deduction is not available if you are opting 115 BAC. Second is suppose if there is a long, uh, there is a like let out property or deemed to be let out property, then interest deduction is available. But guys, if there is a loss under house property due to the let out property or deemed to be let out property, then that loss is not allowed to be set up against any other head of income. Normally what happened house property head losses can be set up against any other head of income up to 2 lakh rupees. But guys, if you are opting this section, nah, then that is not available. If you are opting this section, then that is not applicable. It means the house property losses are not allowed to be set up against any other head of income. It has to be carry forward only. Now in case of the PGBP 10 AA SEZ deduction not available 32.12A that is Additional depreciation not available, 33AB not available, 33AB not available, scientific research donation related deduction not available, 35AD not available, 35CCC agriculture extension project deduction not available. After that, under income from other sources, if you remember, then whenever minor child income is included in the income of parents, then parents can claim the exemption of 1500 per annum, per child, maximum unlimited child. So that particular exemption is not available. After that, in case of the MP or MLA, whatever your daily and constituency allowance that is exempted under section 1030, 1017, that is not available. After that, guys, any deduction under chapter 6 is not available. Means ATC, ATD, ATDD, ATDDB, that any ATTTA, ATTTB, any deduction under chapter 6 is not available. Guys, four deduction is available. Four deductions are available. One is the AT double JAA is available. One is the ATLA that is IFSC located unit that is available. And ATCCD2 and ATCCH2 is available. Now, what is the ATCCD2? ATCCD2 is whenever your employer contributes to the new pension scheme or central government pension scheme, then you know that employee can claim the deduction of whatever amount contributed by employer or 10% of salary or in case of the central government, state government employee, that is 14% of salary. So that is the ATCCD2 deduction that can be claimed by employee, even employee opting 115 BAC. And 11, uh, sorry, ATCCH2 is related to the Agnivir Corpus Fund. So guys, this section is a new section. In case of the Agnivir, if government is contributing something for the Agnivir Corpus Fund, then here employee can claim the deduction under section 80 CCH 2. Now one more point. Lawmaker says that if any brought forward losses or unabsorbed depreciation due to this all section, if there is a brought forward losses or unabsorbed depreciation due to all this section, then it is not allowed to be set up and carry forward. Now guys, there is one interesting case here. An interesting case is from this year, this section is a default taxation regime. Miss 115 BAC is a default taxation regime. 
means there is if you are not filing any form nothing is there then you have to opt this section this is the default section from this year this section is a default section now if you don't want to opt this section then you have to opt out from this section and go for the normal provision then you have to fill the form so guys what i am saying that normally now from this year this section 115 bac is the default taxation regime default taxation regime means you have to follow this section but suppose if you don't want to follow this section then you can opt out from this section and for that purpose you have to opt out from this section and go for the normal provision and when you are going for the normal provision then you have to file one form you got my point or not yes now there is one interesting point suppose you are not having the pgbp income if you are not having the pgbp income then every year you have an option means either follow this default taxation regime or opt out default taxation regime and follow the normal provision every year you have an option but guys suppose you are having the pgbp income and you are having the pgbp income and if you opted from 115 bsc opted out from 115 bsc means suppose if you don't follow the 115 bsc now you are following normal provision if opted out from 115 bsc then just follow the normal provision for the next year also but suppose in any year if you opting in 115 bsc means if you opt 115 bsc now then guys again you cannot opt to the normal provision till the time you are having the business so till the time you are having the business again you cannot follow the normal provision you got my point or not yes now one more point guys this section says that okay, suppose if you are having pgbp income and first time you are opting this section you are having pgbp income and first time you are opting this section you are having pgbp income and first time you are opting this section and guys when you are opting this section then obviously additional depreciation is not available but suppose if there is an additional depreciation is there in your unabsorbed depreciation then obviously that additional depreciation is not allowed to set up but guys that additional depreciation will be added to the your opening wdv as on 1 4 2023 but this is applicable only when in current year you are opting first time 115 BAC and you are having the PGBP income and in your unabsorbed depreciation there is an additional depreciation that is not allowed to be set up but it will be added to your block of asset as on 14-2023. Now one more interesting point guys, 87A rebate. When you are opting this provision, means default taxation regime 115 BAC, then guys, 87A rebate is changed. And how 87A rebate is changed? In 87A rebate, instead of the 5 lakh, there is a now limit is 7 lakh, and instead of the 12,500, now it is a 25,000. So now this rebate is available to the resident individual having total income of 7 lakh. Then your rebate is at 100% of the tax payable or 25,000, whichever is lower. But guys, here they have introduced the concept of marginal relief means if your income is little bit more than 7 lakh then obviously this rebate is not available but it is here margin relief concept is applicable i can take an example suppose if your total income is 7 lakh then your tax is 25000 your rebate is 25000 there is no tax but suppose if your total income is 7 lakh 27000 so here 7 lakh 27000 so your what is the tax so tax will be 27700 guys rebate is not available but guys here marginal relief concept is applicable here marginal relief concept is applicable here your like income is increased on only 27,000 and due to that tax is increased 27,700 huh? so here 700 will be your marginal relief you got my point or not yes just check the all three example you will able to understand done so this is the completion of your this is the completion of your special taxation regime or you can say that the alternative taxation regime 115 BAA, BAB, BAC, BAD and BAE. Now as some other special tax rates very simple 115 BB is related to lottery, crossword, puzzle, card game etc etc tax rate is 30%. Now deemed income under section 68 to 69D like cash credit or unexplained expenditure or unexplained investment and all then guys as per section 115 BBE your tax rate is 60% your surcharge is always 25% health and education says 4% so effective tax rate is 78% now guys suppose if you developed any patent in India develop the patent in India and you are a resident person if you are a resident person and guys if you have developed the any patent in India patent development in India means 75% of your expenditure on development of patent is incurred in India then your royalty income is taxable only at the rate 10% royalty income is taxable at only at the rate 10% but guys suppose if SSC is opting this section and he agree to pay the tax at the rate 10% on the royalty income once it is opted now then for next five year you have to opt this section but suppose in next five year if you violate it then in the year in violation took place that year and next five 
five year of that year, you are not eligible to opt this section. After that, one one five BBG, if you sell the carbon credit point, then your income tax is taxable at the rate ten percent. Now, in case of the online gaming, online gaming means that Dream Eleven or that online Rummy and all, your income is taxable at the rate thirty percent. In detail, I will explain you with the TDS TCS topic. Now, guys, all this special tax rate, special tax rate means from here one one five BB to one one five BBJ. Any deduction of expenditure is not allowed. Means gross income is going to be taxable. Deduction under Chapter Six A also not available, as well as basic exemption benefit is also not available. But basic exemption benefit is available in case of special rates of income. One is the LTCG one one two, one is the LTCG one one two A, and one is the STCG triple one A in case of resident individual and resident HUF. That basic exemption benefit is available. Means unexhausted basic exemption and all that we will discuss in the capital gain topic. Now, guys, last concept here is. Diversion of income and application of income. Now, what is the diversion of income by overriding of title and application of income? Diversion of income means suppose for an example you are getting any income and at a source only from from any source you are getting the income and at a source only if there is any obligation created by the law or any contract and you have to give this income to someone else, then this it is called diversion of income. By overriding title, and guys, that income will be taxable in that third person, means whoever received that income. This is called diversion of income. It is not taxable in your hand. I can take an example. Suppose me and Shubham Keshwani sir, we both created one partnership firm. Now, we have made one arrangement in partnership firm. That suppose after my death, my wife will get the twenty percent income of the partnership firm. Miss twenty percent income will be get uh, getting by my wife after my death. Now suppose after my death that twenty percent income of firm will be handed over to my wife. This is called your diversion of income by overriding of title. So in this particular case, whatever partnership firm income that twenty percent will be taxable in my wife hand and eighty percent taxable in hands of the partnership firm. This is called your diversion of income by overriding title. And one is the application of income. Application of income is very simple. Application of income means suppose if you got the income and after that you applied somewhere or you have given some to one else. So then there is no obligation created by the law. Then in that particular case it is application of income and application of income means your gross income will be taxable in your hand only. Done. So there are two examples is given. If you read the example you will able to understand. So this is the completion of your revision lecture number 1. Where we have covered the first topic, and basically we have covered the alternative taxation regime, marginal relief, eighty-seven A, and all done. So, guys, in your hand, remaining few time is uh, in your hand for your examination. I just request you to give hundred percent for your examination. I always say that give hundred percent. I say I will give you fifty percent, and we need only fifty percent to crack the exam. So, guys, you don't have like uh, much time. So, just focus to your examination. That is your goal. That is your aim. Just crack it this time, and uh, in the new syllabus, this is going to be first attempt in the May two thousand twenty four. And uh, if I remember, every time whenever there is a new syllabus, na, then there will be a like fantastic result. If I remember the CPT first attempt, you know that in two thousand six when CPT introduced before foundation, there was a CPT. In CPT first attempt, result was seventy percent. Means seventy percent student cracked the exam. So first uh, attempt of the new syllabus is always a golden attempt. First two attempt is a golden attempt because institute is having limited resources. So they will ask you question from the ICI material only, mostly. So guys, just crack it in this exam. This exam in the May or November two thousand twenty-four. Thanks a lot, people. That's enough for today from my side. Bye.